Hello. I just got an email this evening asking me some suggestions on where to get packages while you're out on the road. And I thought I had covered this in a video at one time or another, but apparently I haven't. So I just thought while that, that was still fresh in my mind, I would just uh, kind of reiterate here on video what I had wrote back to uh, this person in the email. So I thought I'd turn my heater on and make a cup of coffee uh, <laughs> while I was getting prepared and getting set up for this. Uh, probably the heater, the coffee, and the sweater is a little too much. I may have to be real quick on this uh, or turn the heater off. Mm, probably I should turn the heater off because, you know, being quick is not really my strong suit here. First off, I should just say that I have a service that handles most of my mail. So any of my regular mail bills and things like that uh, get sent to a company which handles that for me. So this is a virtual mailbox type company. And if you Google virtual mailbox, you'll find that there are a lot of different companies out there that provide this type of service. And so most of my mail comes uh, to me through that virtual mailbox. Uh, so that means that if it's a letter of some sort, or even a bill of some sort, I don't necessarily need to get that bill in my hand uh, because I have set up with the company that I am working with to be able to open up any letter that I tell them to open up. They will make a PDF copy and put that online. So I can access any of my mail uh, as long as I have an internet connection. As long as I have cell phone connection, uh, I can get to my mail and look at my mail. And of course, you know, nowadays, most places have an option of being able to pay by mail. And so usually I don't need to actually get my mail into my hands physically. Uh, I just use that virtual service. I won't mention the company that I use for my mail, the virtual mailbox service that I use for my mail, uh, because I'm I'm not terribly happy with them anymore. Uh, the company has really changed uh, their services over the years. I've had them now for six years, I guess. And the, the service has really changed. In fact, it's changed so much that I probably would have signed up with a different service uh, if I were looking at it right now. But like I said, if you just Google virtual mailbox, you will find a lot of these services. And there's a number of companies you can kind of match up what your needs are versus what they offer. And uh, if you're like me and you want to just get your mail virtually, uh, there's a lot of services out there that do that. The downside to these companies is they charge quite a bit more if you need to get something in your hands, if you need to get a box of something. That's kind of the downside is they, they do charge quite a bit of money. And most of that comes from the shipping companies. So whether they're sending it uh, through the postal service or through FedEx or UPS, uh, those additional charges are going to be quite significant, especially now. Uh, I had a package I needed to get quickly from my service. Uh, I had mailed it to myself and then I needed to get it in my hands really quickly. And when I tried to send it FedEx, uh, it was going to be $200 for uh, three-day shipping, uh, which of course is outrageous. So I didn't do that, obviously. So shipping charges are the big deal here. I would highly suggest buying stuff at a store versus trying to get stuff mailed to you. That's what I do. And it kind of keeps my shipping costs down. If I'm driving, say, by a Home Depot or by a Target or by, by a grocery store, that has something that I am going to need, I'll stop it and get it. And I'll put off buying something that I might need in, until I'm passing a store that I uh, can buy something uh, myself. I, I just don't like ordering stuff. Uh, but if I do need to get something, and I do need to get things from time to time, there's a lot of things that you just can't get uh, at a physical store. This mic is one of those things. Uh, when I decided to buy this mic, because a friend of mine suggested it, uh, they were out of stock everywhere and nobody had one in stock and so I ended up ordering it online and that was just the easiest way to do it. Um, I did end up buying it from Best Buy and so I had it sent to a Best Buy store. I do the same thing with Home Depot. If it's something that Home Depot sells and I 
and they just don't happen to have it in stock, I'll order it and then send it to a Home Depot that I am either by at the moment, that I'm either staying at at the moment, or I'll look and see if if I'm passing a Home Depot somewhere out along the road, I'll have it sent to that Home Depot. Now, if you can't have any of that done and you, you just absolutely need to get something uh, shipped to you from a store, my preference is to use FedEx. And they used to call them Kinkos. I think all the, the name Kinkos are gone now, but uh, I think they called all the FedEx locations that used to be Kinkos, they call them FedEx office locations. And they're a great resource, especially if you're ordering from a company that is sending that package by FedEx. So if I need something from a company that I just can't get my hands on locally, I'm more likely to buy from a company that ships FedEx so that I can have it sent to a FedEx location. And the reason that I like FedEx is, one, they're, they're usually pretty reliable. Uh, the shipping charges are usually a little bit less than UPS, and there's no ch charge to sending your package to a FedEx office location. Did I say that? I may have not said that. Uh, so that's why I like to send packages to a FedEx office location is it's totally free of charge as long as it's being shipped by FedEx. Uh, th that's the one little key there. Now, there are a few things to keep in mind if you are shipping to a FedEx location or to a UPS location, you want to make sure that your phone number is on the shipping label, and you also want to make sure that it says on the shipping label, hold at location. Uh, you can also type out H-A-L, and they'll know what that means, but that clues them into knowing that that item has been shipped to their location. They're going to hold it until you come and pick it up. As soon as I get the shipping information from the company that is shipping the package, I'll go in and set up uh, text message alerts with FedEx. And I highly suggest you do that. Uh, most of the FedEx locations are really busy and they just don't have time to call you. Even though they want your name on the shipping label, uh, they just usually don't have time to call you. They're, they're usually just way too busy to do that. But as long as you have uh, notifications set up on uh, text messages or email, if you prefer, you'll know about the time the package is going to get to the location, and you'll also know the exact time that the package actually gets delivered drop and dropped off at the location. So you can just show up. Uh, it just kind of saves them a step of having to put it away. Uh, they can just hand it off to you. So between the text alerts and the fact that there's no extra charge to have a package sent to FedEx, uh, that's really my preferred place to get a package sent to. Now, sometimes there isn't a FedEx location around. Uh, there usually are quite a bit of them, but sometimes there aren't any around. And so I will use uh, UPS stores uh, as in the same way and just making sure that my phone number is on the shipping label and also that hold at location uh, is on the shipping label as well. Now, the reason I don't usually use UPS stores as a place to get packages is they do charge $5 for each package. And they don't like really big packages. Uh, if it's gonna be something very oversized, uh, they would kind of prefer you not to ship it there. So just something to keep in mind with UPS stores. Although I've found UPS stores to be incredibly reliable. They've just all been incredibly good. Uh, it's just you do have to pay that $5 a package and that's pretty pricey as far as I'm concerned. Now, another way, of course, is if you're going to buy from Amazon, you can have your package sent to an Amazon locker location, and there are Amazon lockers all over in the West Coast. I'm not quite sure about other parts of the country or in different countries, but uh, here on the West Coast of the United States, uh, there are lockers, Amazon lockers everywhere. Now, the one little catch with an Amazon locker is really only allows so many oversized items in those lockers, and so you're liable to uh, see a little notice that the item is either oversized and it won't fit, uh, or it'll also say uh, that it's beyond the seller's uh, shipping area. Uh, and that really all 
Amazon is trying to tell you is, is that it's just too big to fit in one of their lockers. They just have a funny way of saying that sometimes. If you are getting that message that says that it's too big to fit in a locker or it's outside the shipper's area or the seller's area, uh, you might look for an Amazon hub location. And this is going to be a place that it's a, it's a manned location. So there's going to be somebody there that you would go up to and you would show your uh, barcode to, and then they would go and fetch your package instead of you walking up to an automated system like the Amazon lockers. Uh, the Amazon lockers are really nice and convenient because you don't have to deal with somebody. You don't have to talk to anybody which I really like. I, I kind of prefer that. If I'm going to order from Amazon, I'm already a little bit upset with myself. And so I would really just rather get in, not see anybody, get that package out of the Amazon locker without talking to anybody and get out of there. Uh, but the hub locations are kind of convenient because you can get bigger packages. Now, not always in, in all Amazon hub locations, but definitely check out Amazon hub locations if a locker isn't working for you. And of course, the final two things are you can always have something sent to a friend or family. Uh, I try not to send too much to friends and family because it doesn't matter how close of a family member it is or how good of a friend it is. People get tired of handling your mail if you're constantly asking them to do so. And then the last one here, uh, because everybody likes to talk about it, is general delivery at a post office. Now, I've tried general delivery three times, and all three times have not gone well for me at all. I don't use general delivery anymore. Uh, it's just something I stay away from just because I figure three strikes you're out, and uh, I don't want to have to deal with that anymore. So those are the ways that I get packages while I'm out and about. And uh, no, I don't have a post office box. Uh, I really don't like them. You know, it can get really expensive at $3 or $4 or $5 a gallon for gas to uh, drive 50 or 60 miles to go and check your uh, post office box. So I don't suggest using a post office box. So hopefully you found this at least a little bit helpful. Hey, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.